Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Nice to see you back in Exotic Astrology. And after a long time, we are starting again with the Srimad Bhagavatam playlist. The last video was on the famous shloka Manda Sumanda Matayo Mandi Bhagya Upadrita. This is a very famous shloka. This was actually in the last video. O oh, learned one, in this iron age of Kali, men have but short lives. They are quarrelsome, lazy, misguided, unlucky, and above all, always disturbed. The last one. So in that we saw the sages of Nemi Sharanya being very anxious to disentangle all the uh, living entities of Kali Yuga by discussing the Srimad Bhagavatam from Srila Sut Goswami because Sut Goswami had heard it from Sukhdev Goswami who was narrating this to Parikshit Maharaj, right? And that was the 10th verse, 10th shloka and now we are in the 11th shloka. And let us start. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So we'll discuss the 11th shloka from the first chapter, first canto. We have still done with only 10 shlokas, my God. <laughs> Bhagavatam has 18,000 verses. God knows how many I'll be able to do it in this lifetime. All right, 11th verse, there you go. Bhurini bhuri karmani srotavyani vibhagasa ata sadhyo trayat saranam saram samudrita mani mani saya bhuri bhadraya bhutanam yenatma suprasiddhati prasiddhati <laughs> Translation There are many varieties of scriptures and in all of them, there are many prescribed duties, which can be learned only after many years of study in their various divisions. Therefore, O Sage, please select the essence of all these scriptures and explain it for the good of all living beings, that by such instruction their hearts may be fully satisfied. So let's go to the purport. It's a small purport actually. Atma or self is distinguished from matter and material elements. It is spiritual in constitution and thus it is never satisfied by any amount of material planning. All scriptures and scriptural instructions are meant for the satisfaction of this self or Atma. Let's repeat. All scriptures and scriptural instructions are meant for the satisfaction of this self or Atma, not for the body. There are many varieties of approaches which are recommended for different types of living beings in different times at different places. Consequently, the numbers of revealed scriptures are innumerable. Actually, they say there are, uh, if you cal calculate all the verses from all the scriptures, so it's like 10 to the power 10, you know, so 1 and 10 zeros like that. So imagine how many verses are there and imagine how many can we read and understand or even know. It's impossible to learn so many verses. Taking into consideration the fallen condition of the people in the in general in this age of Kali, the sages of Nemi Sharanya suggested that Sri Sud Goswami relate the essence of all such scriptures. Because in this age it is not possible for the fallen souls to understand and undergo all the lessons of the various scriptures in a Varna and Ashrama system. The Varnashram society was considered to be the best institution for lifting the human being to the spiritual platform. But due to Kali Yuga, it is not possible to execute the rules and regulations of these institutions. Nor is it possible for the people in general to completely sever relations with their families as, in, as the Varnashram institution prescribes. The whole atmosphere is surcharged with opposition. Interesting. 
and considering this one can see that spiritual emancipation for the common man in this age is very difficult the reason the sage has presented this matter to Srila Sudh Goswami is explained in the following verses. Okay, so we will uh, read the next shloka also because this the next purport is also very small. And then maybe we will read the next also. All right. So, what is the crux of this verse? The crux of this verse is that there are many, many, many shlokas, there are many scriptures not only in the Vedic context, even in Islam, Christianity, Judaism, Sikhism, Jainism, Buddhism, there are so many scriptures, so many rules, regulations, so many instructions given. But in the Vedic context, the sages of Naimisharanya are very well aware of the predicament of the people of Kali Yuga, which is all of us, that we, our situation is Manda Sumanda Matayo Mandya Bhagya Manda Bhagya Upadrita, which means it's it's not very good <laughs> in short the last statement of the previous shloka you know we are always disturbed have you seen people you know grazing you know grazing endlessly facebook instagram you know linkedin you know, youtube they're they're empty they're disturbed they're finding happiness you know just by seeing or reading or you know, roaming with the opposite sex like dogs you know, and then running behind things materialistic things there they are ruining their lives just see anybody around you <laughs> you'll know what is the situation of people in Kali Yuga. nobody is happy these days not a single person of course they may be appearing to be very happy but deep down inside they're empty they're lonely they're crying they're miserable and they have no hope the situation of people in Kali Yuga is hopeless because they don't know what to do which will give them hope you know because as i am from the 80 uh, the 90s generation so that generation was you know, like okay okay don't follow rules don't follow the scriptures do what you want scriptures say you should marry and stay with one no we will live like dogs you know we will have live in relations we will we will stay. We will. Uh, we will stay with one person two years, and if we don't like, we will throw them out. Then we will put somebody, some other person in. Uh, the scriptures say you should not eat meat. You should not kill animals. It's not good to give suffering. No, we will eat. We will eat chicken. We will eat mutton. We will eat beef. We will eat pork. We will eat what not. <laughs> humans also someday. You know, maybe you know eating humans. You know. So uh, anything uh, from my childhood, I remember any generation, anything that they used to hear, we used to hear that the scriptures are suggesting not to do this. That is exactly what we will end up doing. So it's the same with addictions. You know, that Okay, why to ruin your life by smoking or drinking or by taking drugs? No, 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 we will do it. Why? Because it feels good. It makes you feel that your life is not better actually, but it's less miserable. <laughs> now, I've never smoked, but uh, some of my friends I know, I mean, currently, who have given up smoking. Um, recently, I was talking to one of my uh, very good friends. He was from uh, my uh, University of Gottingen, where I did my master's. So he was explaining to me, you know, that he smoked for almost uh, seven eight or maybe roughly 10 years and last five years he smoked very heavily and finally last year he had finally given up smoking and drinking also so he was telling me that the situation his situation is so bad in fact it's improving now but he's telling me he told me that day, just recently that even after one year he has completed almost one year or eight months, 10 months of giving up smoking completely. Even now, after one year, when he coughs, you know, all the things which used to go inside when he used to smoke, now all the black substances come out. Imagine after one year also, even today when he coughs, 
those things come out. He was telling me, my God, I destroyed my body completely for no reason. <laughs> yes, so that is one example of smoking. Then about drinking, I have seen. Like sometimes I go to these uh, parties from my office. You know, these are like some obligatory parties. So I stay there till 9.30 and, or 10 p.m. and then I come back because after that they start drinking, uh, the company people. And then uh, one day I thought I will stay for, you know, one or two hours. Let me see what Leela's they do. <laughs> so then I saw you know, the one big manager coming and he was just speaking, you know, how frustrated he was, you know, how terrible, how miserable his life was. And he is someone who everybody looks up to. Everybody aspires to be like him. And I thought, wow, so this is what is my future. If I stay uh, like him or if I have the same habits, you know, you are so miserable that you, you, you cannot even speak it out. But when you're drunk and when you know everybody is drunk, then you come and speak, oh, my life's terrible. You know, I'm addicted. I'm into smoking. 10, 20, I don't know, 100 cigarettes every day. All right, so and people are so much obsessed about followers. Instagram followers, YouTube subscribers, my God. People are, I mean, you do your work, then whoever wants, they will be with you. But then to get followers, to get viewers, people do so many things, my God. I know so many people who will uh, upload uh, their own uh, naked photos also in Instagram. They will make uh, videos in YouTube and uh, all the nasty stuff they will do with their girlfriend, with their boyfriend. Those videos they will upload. Why? Because without that, you do not get followers in Kali Yuga. If you, if you speak on some nice topic, some good topic, you know, nobody is going to listen to you. That's the predicament of Kali Yuga. So, the sages of Naimi Sharanya are very, very well aware of this predicament. So, therefore, they requested Sudh Goswami that, although you know so much, but please give us that which is as if you are giving it to the people of Kali Yuga. Of course, the sages of Nemi Sharanya, headed by Shonak Rishi, they were very elevated. They were not, they, although, although that Kali Yuga had already started, when the Bhagavatam started, uh, this discourse started, um, but still they were not affected by the influence of Kali. Okay, which means they were not Manda Sumanda Matayo, Mandya Bhagya Upadita. They were not like this. They were fully realized in the conclusion of all the scriptures. But they knew that although we are substantially elevated, but the people of Kali Yuga are not. So therefore, please give us something which we can pass on to you know, the next generations. And that is when Sud Goswami speaks the entire Srimad Bhagavatam. So the thing is, we there are so much, there's so much knowledge out there or information or stuff, I would say. So we have to make the right choice you know, and decide who we want to hear from. You know, just take the example of spirituality. If you just Google or if you just find in YouTube, you know, there are thousands and millions of videos. You know. But then the sages of Nemi Sharanya are asking that please tell us only that much which the people of Kali Yuga can digest. So that means what Sudh Goswami is going to speak now or what he has been speaking from, you know, the last certain verses. And that is exactly which is required for us in Kali Yuga. Which means the people of Kali Yuga are not, will, will not be able to digest more than what Sudh Goswami is going to say. Because Sudh Goswami is exactly going to say only that much. It's like very precise, very concise. All right. So therefore it is very important that uh, we read the Srimad bhagavatam regularly as that is why the famous shloka says you know 
नित्यम भागवत से भागवत तीर उत्तम श्लोके भक्ति भवती नैष्ठिकी कृष्णाय वासुदेवाय देवकी नंदनाय च नंद गोप कुमाराय गोविंदाय नमो नम सो वेन वी रेग्युलरली हियर द श्रीमद भागवत सो दिस श्लोका डज नॉट से बुधवार भागवत सेवाया इट डज नॉट से रविवार भागवत सेवाया इट डज नॉट से सोमवार भागवत सेवाया इट डज से नो मंडे ट्यूजडे संडे इट से नित्यम भागवत सेवाया नष्ट प्रायशु अभद्रेशु नित्यम भागवत सेवाया ऑल द अभद्रेशु अभद्रेशु मीन्स भद्र मीन्स ऑल द डिवाइन क्वालिटीज दैट्स वाई दूस टू से ना द भद्र लोक भद्र लोक मीन्स अ ग्रुप ऑफ people who are good a society of civilized people abhadreshu means those who are not good basically those who are idiots basically so all the things which make us behave like idiots nashta prayeshu abhadreshu praya means almost everything nashta gets damaged all those impurities not all actually almost all those impurities <laughs> which make us behave like animals or like dogs or like idiots headless crooks basically those things go away from our consciousness because although the consciousness is chit it's very pure but when it comes into this material world it is known as chitta chitta is the misdirected consciousness which the soul feels uh when it identifies with the matter all right so that is why if i touch my hand and i start beating it pounding on it i will feel pain here because although i am not this hand i am i am myself i am the soul <laughs> but now my consciousness has been redirected towards this hand because of my conception that i am this body so therefore anybody who touches my finger i will feel anybody cuts my finger i will feel pain all right so therefore the thing is we we have to understand that when we read shrimad bhagavatam every day read or hear or even speak also then all the contamination will go otherwise it will not go because this shrimad bhagavatam is actually the result of this shloka if you see because in this shloka they have requested him o oh, sage please select the essence of all the scriptures and explain it for the good of all living beings that by such instruction their hearts may be fully satisfied and in the purport it is written if you see the whole atmosphere is surcharged with opposition my god <laughs> and considering this one can see that spiritual emancipation for the common man in this age is very difficult what does the word emancipation mean exactly let us see what dictionary says dictionary says emancipation means the fact or process of being set free from legal social or political restrictions or liberation basically so spiritual liberation emancipation for the common man in this age is very difficult so therefore sudh goswami has been specifically requested that be very precise and speak exactly that which is required all right so therefore it is very crucial that every day we read at least 30 minutes of the shrimad bhagavatam only then we we can expect some uh, radical transformation in our life all right otherwise uh, there will be no difference between our lives and the life of animals we uh, we will just be born and uh, we will have a resume we will work we will get a marriage certificate and we may become father or mother one day and then one day we will perish we will be no we may not even be in the history books who knows <laughs> so let us not make our lives so useless so worthless so meaningless by just coming and doing a job or earning money and getting married you know having kids and then perish one day that's not what life is life <clears throat> human life as the vedanta sutra says athato brahma jigyasa which means oh human 
spend this life in enquiring about the higher truth athato brahma jigyasa about divinity about god brahma right jigyasa means inquisitiveness <laughs> spend this life in inquiring about god otherwise this life is useless otherwise the the life of food and sex so basically material world is uh, comprised of two things in this material world one is food the other one is sex the all everything is running around that you know all the cosmetic industry all this beauty industry is running on that principle of sex because everybody dresses to look uh, more attractive to the opposite sex they want to they may not want to attract others necessarily but they definitely want to send a signal to members of their sex also that look 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 you are not that attractive you know i am more attractive than you because these many number of people from the opposite sex are running behind me they are getting attracted to me so that is that is why i am more attractive than you 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 losers basically so that envy that jealousy that hatred for others is the fueling uh, it's like that uh, fuel for the entire cosmetic industry that is how they are running otherwise they would perish you know? and all the movies all the theaters uh, most of them 99% of them they only become hit when you know there is some something spicy about sexuality or anything between a man and a woman so basically human life without a uh, spiritual life or without god consciousness is like the life of animals and dogs so let us not live like animals and let us not die like dogs all right let us become more civilized by reading scriptures like the shrimad bhagavatam okay so as expected there is no time for discussing the next shlokas so we will discuss the shlok the next shloka the in the next video all right thank you very much for your patience and as usual if you are new to the channel then uh, please subscribe to it and watch the videos in this playlist and if you want a consultation from me then you can go to the description section down in the below below my videos okay where you'll find the link to my website god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find it no don't look just read and you will find all right thank you very much